first and foremost, uh, all praises, glory, and honor, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Uh, once upon a time, there was a man by the name of Solomon. Uh, and Solomon was a man of great contradiction. On one hand, he was a man of many weaknesses that made many mistakes. On the other hand, he was a man that left seeds of timeless, unparalleled wisdom along the path of the imperfect trail he once blazed on this earth. And in the third chapter of the book of Ecclesiastes, he explains how there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens. In short, he says there's a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. And with that in mind, tonight I am announcing my retirement from the Greenbelt City Council, effective Friday, August 25th, 2023. Why? Because it's time. Traditionally, when a public servant announces his or her retirement or their retirement, one of the most natural reflexes is to tick off all of the accomplishments uh, that they've made uh, to try to shape the narrative about their legacy. And there will be some time for some of that. But my preference tonight is to leave some parting thoughts and to share some of the biggest lessons that I've learned uh, during my time on the city council. Before I do that, I would like to make a few important acknowledgements. First, to whoever ultimately fills the seat I currently hold on the city council, Notice I didn't say my seat is the people's seat. I'm committing to doing what I can to facilitate as smooth a transition as possible, whether that's in the form of providing advice or feedback or resources, or whether that's simply in the form of just getting out of your way. In advance, I wish you, whoever you are, the best of health and spirit as you take your seat in this legislative body and do the important work of, in, of serving the people of Greenbelt. Second, I am extraordinarily grateful to God, my parents, and my family. You were with me before. Many of you will be me, have been with me during and will continue to be with me after. And that goes for many of my friends as well. Third, I wanna say that I am so grateful to every single resident of Greenbelt that has consistently supported me over these six years since I first threw my hat in the ring in hopes of becoming a member of this body. Thank you for always believing in me. Your steadfast gratitude for and belief in my vision and my work, in spite of my many flaws, is something I'll never forget. And the consistent love that you all have shown me is among the most beautiful, touching things I've experienced in my life thus far. Many of you have breathed life into me, even in the midst of the darkest of days, and I will never forget that. Jeanette Gordy, I'm sorry, Principal Jeanette Gordy, you paved the way, and I thank you. Dr. Lois Rosado, I, I thank you. And I thank you for cherishing our history and the culture of our people. I thank you for your advice. I thank you for dutifully, fa faithfully engaging with, with the most challenging issues of our time. I'm grateful to every single member of the Greenbelt Reparations Commission. Thank you for striving to be civilly obedient to the principles of justice. Thank you, Reverend Ray Razor and Mrs. Ray, 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 Renee Razor. Thank you, Michael Hartman. Thank you, Bob Brand. Thank you, Donna, Dr. Donna Heifmeister, and so many more. Thank you. I'm sure I have many more thank yous after this, but that, that's it for now on the thank yous. I'm also grateful to those of you who never supported me or whose support for me ebbed and flowed over the course of my time on the city council. While we may not have always agreed, and while we may never be the best of buddies, I appreciate that you challenging me helped me to grow and helped me to learn more about the breadth of the political ideologies in this city of Greenbelt. Number five, I am grateful to every single one of the employees of the city of Greenbelt from the city administration to animal control to Greenbelt Cares to the Planning and Community Development Department, to police, to communications, to public works, to recreation and parks, 
and I'm grateful to every single one of those Greenbelt residents on advisory boards and committees, especially the Advisory Committee on Education, the Youth Advisory Committee, and Green Aces. Six, thank you to all of my colleagues seated to my right on the City Council for much of the work we've been able to do together uh, and for the many lessons that you've taught me, sometimes in hard ways and often simply just by example. To Councilmember Jay Davis, Judith Davis, thank you for teaching me a great deal about tradition, about order, about preparation. To Mayor Pro Tim Weaver, thank you for teaching me a great deal about refining fresh ideas, coalition building, patience and focus. To Councilmember Silky Pope, thank you for teaching me a great deal about the fact that one of the most important priorities for a public servant is to make people in the community feel safe. To Councilmember Rodney Roberts, thank you for demonstrating tireless advocacy, sincere principles, steadfast values, loyalty, and an unapologetic commitment to straight shooting in a world where it's somewhat uncommon. To Councilmember Rick Gordon, thank you for demonstrating the power of resilience, uh, of patience, humility, bridge building, consistent, I'm sorry, consensus, listening, community service, learning from your own and other successes and mistakes, and for your dedication to this community. And to Mayor Emma Jordan, thank you for helping me to better understand the art of winning and losing protocol, collaboration, resilience, thoughtfulness, social awareness, and the brilliant chess moves that can be deployed in this game of politics. And thank you for being in many ways the Jesse Owens of Greenbelt politics. <laughs> truth, truth, truth be told, sometimes I'm a little more like Tommy Smith. But anybody that knows history knows that there is no Tommy Smith without Jesse Owens. I wish each and every one of you the very best as you continue to serve in this body. And I am a witness that you all have unique, important talents and gifts that you have thus far admirably offered in service to the people of Greenbelt. As I reflect on this moment in my life at the age of 30, I'm reminded of a football player by the name of Gail Sayers. And Gail, he played running back for the Chicago Bears, and by most accounts, he was a pretty good running back in his time. In fact, he had one of the greatest rookie seasons ever, and he scored six touchdowns in one game as a rookie. In fact, no pro player has scored six touchdowns in one game since. But Gail retired at about 30 years old before the start of the 1972 season. Why? Well, it was the culmination of devastating knee injuries that had slowed him down. And while he initially tried to continue playing the game, it was becoming increasingly clear that he just couldn't play the game like he used to. The final straw was when he was playing in an exhibition game prior to the 1972 season, and he fumbled twice in three carries. At halftime, before the game was even over, he knew it was time to retire. And he told his coach, in other words, Gail retired from the game because the game had worn on him a little earlier than he initially anticipated. And he felt like he could no longer play the game like he used to. He had dropped the ball one too many times. He retired because he knew it was time. Why am I retiring? Because, truth be told, among other reasons, the work of Greenbelt City politics has to some extent worn on me. Some may say I had an okay Ricky season, but I just can't play the game like I used to. And I feel like I've dropped the ball one too many times. I'm retiring because I feel it is time. God willing, my service will continue to be rendered, but it will be so off this particular field of play. See, what we have to remember about Gail is that long after retiring from the game of football, Gail did many things. He worked in TV and finance, in the computer industry, even in athletics administration, helping other athletes compete in the game he once played. 
His story is an inspirational reminder that there is life after injury and often more to life than just playing the game. But one of the things I appreciate most about Gil's life is that he authored a book. It's called I Am Third. I have it right here. It tells the story. Actually, let me see if I can leave it up here. Huh? Okay, you got it. It tells the story of how Gil's time in the game of football helped to clarify his life's priorities. Oh, I'm sorry. It tells the story of his peaks and valleys in football, and it tells the story of his friendship with his teammate Brian Piccolo. Their friendship was unique in part because of the fact that Gil was black and Brian was white at a time when that was virtually unheard of in the NFL. It was also a friendship that particularly tugged at people's heartstrings because of the medical challenges that Brian ultimately suffered and the simultaneous deepening of the meaningfulness of their friendship. The book is a story of how Gil's time in the game of football helped to clarify his life's priorities beyond the game, the beauty and the interconnectedness of all humanity, and the emotional toll of experiencing pain and of observing people you care about in pain. But what I love most about the book is, again, its title, I Am Third. The reason Gail titled it I Am Third is because when he was in college at the University of Kansas, he ran track. The first time he was invited to the office of his track coach, Bill Easton, Gail noticed that Bill had a sign on his desk. It was a placard that read, I Am Third. Eventually, he asked Bill, what does that sign mean? And Bill explained to him that for him, it was a reminder that the Lord is first, Others are second, and I am third. That philosophy made such an impression on Gale that when he played for the Chicago Bears and for the rest of his life, he often wore a medallion around his neck that said, I am third. I know not how history and people will ultimately judge my service to the city of Greenbelt. I suspect that for some, the judgment may be harsh. I understand that. I expect that. For some, they may see that for all of my flaws, there is perhaps some good, perhaps some silver lining. Either way, I leave you with this once again. The greatest lesson that this chapter of my life has reinforced for me is the Lord is first, others are second, and I am third. Thank you, and may God bless the city of Greenbelt.